Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. How's everybody doing out there? We got a great guest tonight. Somebody who's going to inform us about some new technology and some other cool stuff because he knows everything about everything audio, or at least we we've been led to believe that he, he knows more than we need to know let's put it that way. right robert marshall's our guest tonight say hello Mark. hello thank you for having me it's a pleasure <laughs> having you uh we got lots to talk about so if you've got a question throw it in the chat room whether you are in facebook or youtube live or if you're some strange reason watching on linkedin we'd love to hear from you there too this is a great um, time to ask questions about source connect of yep. course, not or about that. anything about Passport, <laughs> um, the new audio interface, yeah, or really yeah. just about voiceover production in general. Robert produces. Right. Are we ready, gentlemen? Let's do, Let's it. do it. Time for voiceover body shop. Right. Wait a second. I got to be in the right place right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Oh, Robert picked up on that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we've got a lot to talk about tonight, especially dealing with some new voiceover only technology. <laughs> dealing with uh, voiceover only that, plus. What? Plus. Uh, <laughs> again, if you have any questions for Robert Marshall about, you know, audio engineering or what he's been engineering or Source Connect or some of the stuff from Source Elements, feel free to throw it in the chat room. Where Jeff Holman and his forehead will put us, will put the the information in front of us, and we can ask him in our next segment. So, don't hesitate to ask a question. So anyway, it's time to introduce our guest, who is no no, he is not a a, a mystery to us. Robert Marshall is the innovations co-founder of Source Elements. He holds degrees in electrical engineering and music composition. Using his skills as a musician, engineer, and producer, he is the visionary behind the idea of leveraging internet connectivity to make post-production faster and more productive. Let's welcome back to our show, Robert Marshall. How you doing? I'm good. How you guys doing? Thank you. We're, we're, you're doing okay. Uh, Thanks for joining us. I yeah, feel like absolutely. I've talked to you much, much, much too much lately. <laughs> yeah, well, we've been we've been trying to get the word out and... <laughs> It's a lot Probably more things. emails than talking, actually. Yeah, you're right. No, it's been a hell of a lot of emails. <laughs> but it's, it's good to see your face here, and thanks for yeah. joining us to talk about your side of the side yeah. of the glass, so to speak. Yeah, side of the glass. Um, the other well, side of whatever you're on. Anyway, so let me let me ask: you, How did you start in audio engineering? Um, trying to be in a band. Basically, that'll do it. <laughs> you were the guy in the band that had to deal with the sound because nobody. I I figured out like I don't know. I, I started a band with my friend, and all we really had was guitars. And then I had another friend who had a little cassette four track, and I was mesmerized. And they had done like an album in maybe it was freshman year high school. So I. uh Recorded some songs over there, and then eventually my neighbor had a broken TAC 3340 reel-to-reel -reel machine, which was a nice quarter-inch four-track. And um, gosh, what happened? My uncle fixed it. He worked for GE. He could re read a schematic, like fix one thing in it. Boom, that thing came back to life. And then I 
recorded an album with that. And the other thing I had was an Insonic SQ1 keyboard sequencer where you could get your drums and everything yes. else you can imagine out of it. And, and, and you'll get a kick out of this. Like to sync them up, I just had a mark for the playhead or the record head, and I'd put a mark on the tape and I'd line it up to either one and I would just that the the tack like you hit play and it would just go. There wasn't any like so I just hit play on the two at the same time. <laughs> I know why I like Insonic. Not only did my cousin have an Insonic ESQ one, but they were founded and ran in Malvern, Pennsylvania. Oh which is okay. a suburb between Philly and Westchester where I grew up. So that's Yeah, probably I'm the saddest about. thing about Insonic is they got sold to like Sound Blaster and right. sort of went just completely yeah. consumer and uh that's right creative technology is the point and where yeah. is sound blaster today <laughs> uh, well probably bigger yeah they probably made more money than making keyboards <laughs> so so you you came out of you know as a lot of people do uh, learning the the recording engineering from doing music and then you drifted over to some other stuff uh Namely, yeah. this, thing, this thing that we've been talking about for the last 15 years called Source, Con Source Connect. So how, how did you start That's Source Elements? That so, yeah. so basically, I get out of school for music composition and electronics, and I work at some studios, and I eventually end up at this uh, post house in Chicago called Cutters, and they had video editorial, they had finishing, there's like, you know, Hollywood on two floors of an office building. They had just all the disciplines and in that was audio. And um, they had just switched to Pro Tools. And uh, I'm coming out of college. I had, they had a Pro Tools system at college version two, if you can believe that. And um, then I bought my first Pro Tools system because I was working a retail job and I decided I was going to get it with the discount. So I got a Pro Tools three system way back then in the 90s. And I knew Pro Tools, so I got my gig at Cutters. And Cutters was doing a lot of ISDN sessions. And um, they used to, I guess, complain, whatever, comment on how expensive the bill was, the phone bill was. And <laughs> I think at the time it was, you know, as much as like $2,000 a month. And, oh, wow, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <It> was, you <laughs> know, like a, doll like a dollar a minute or more kind of stuff. And um, And so... At the same time, they had a T1 line, if you can believe that. And that was like, oh, my God, we have this like super fast Internet connection because everything that else was, was... 1.5 megabits per second. Right. right? This is like most Symmetric. people are still getting dial up for their house at this point. Right. Like it's mostly 56K. If you're really fancy, maybe maybe you have a DSL connection. Cable companies are not providing Internet at this point. Um, and so I was like... Hey, this internet thing, you know, ISDN is 128K and uh, the internet here is 1.5 megs. Like, shouldn't this be possible? And he, he just sort of like was like, whatever, like, go figure it out if you think that's such a great idea. And I, I ended up doing a proof of concept um, and just streamed audio, I think actually using QuickTime at the time uh, from the Chicago office of the California office. Seemed reasonably feasible there was some latency there were some dropouts and um we began trying to find people that would be able to put um you know like sort of build the software the the system the way we thought it should be and every single quote was just out of hand it was insane like you know you go to the, all the existing music companies and all the vendors that cutters had is you know, and they're just like, oh, yeah, we'll build that for a million dollars or something <laughs> like I was like, no. And um, at the same time, I had some friends who had built software out of their basement and had made done really well doing that. And so I knew that, A, it doesn't take like a big company. It just takes one really motivated person and they can do a whole what seemed like an application. You know, you, you learn a lot of these things later, but um. But I couldn't get him to do it because he was busy doing his own thing. And But friend of a friend and I had met Rebecca and we're just getting a beer. And um, you know, I'm like, at this point, I'm probably just bugging everybody with the idea, I bet. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, I want to do this thing. And Rebecca's like, oh, yeah, that, I, I could do that for $30,000. <laughs> oh, well, that's better than a million. Dollars. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> it was like, this, this is, this is how you get it done. So we, we, we actually ended up putting together like a business proposal. Like, 
I forget. It felt like it was probably over a couple of days. It felt like one night at this point, but um, got, got this business proposal together, got everyone to start writing checks. And it was far more than $30,000, but it's sort of like Vegas. Like once you have people throwing coins into the slot, eventually there was going to be a source connect popped out of that thing. We just didn't know how many coins it was going to take. So, uh, so you decided that uh, you decided to get a tool working. When do you think Source Connect became a true alternative or backup to ISDN? When did it really start to take a head of steam? By by two thousand seven, you've got people bridging and trying to find ways around ISDN, using it for traveling. That was one of the first things. Like the really high end voice talent was like, I can leave the house and I can bridge, and the, and the really high end ones would set up their own bridges. Um, I would say definitely. I mean, George, when did you set up the bridge with Steve? Because that would have been. That's a really good question. It was around 2005. Oh, no, it had to be after that because we were we just sold our first copies. I think that's more like 2007. Okay, 2006, 2007, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was probably like two years for us, like really rolling the rock uphill. And mm-hmm. I feel like by the time Steve, definitely by the time Steve got into it and people are like, I'll build a business off of bridging to this thing. Kind right. Of thing. Like, yeah. it had gotten some roots. It's been so long since I worked with Steve in Out of Here that I don't even have a client folder called Out of Here. That's how long it's been. Like, if that gives you a, a time. Like, I, know, I don't have a record going back that far. Or I an mean, email thread. But the it's, one, been, it's been a long time. I'll, I'll tell you how I know. Like, like it only actually, it only happened this year. But when we started, we were like, who who's the company? It was like EDNet. They were the ones. Like yeah. all the really high end connections were going through EDNet. We we're like, can we beat EDNet? Well, they're out of business now. So yes. <laughs> now you can. Well, you've outlasted them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, um, and, and they weren't really in the same thing. They were more like a service provider of other right. people's stuff. I mean, they ended up selling our stuff at the end. Right. So so they they're not exactly the case, but we were. You know, it's funny because like that was success at the time, sure. um, but I think the the mark has moved <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about your 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 studio cave recording. Um, it's a mess right now. How's that? Well, um, we can only see parts of the mess. So. I know there's a drum on the shelf behind you. Yeah, That's- yeah like this. It really is a mess right now. But I'll show you anyways. Here, ready? Here goes that light that you were complaining about. So there's the. Uh, Amic big with there's pro tools with the monitor that's not turned on you can see that oh yeah just keyboard at got some amps over there in the corner diffusers behind me uh whoops i'm gonna pull my headphones out hold on are those diffusers you guys made yourself or no those are actually rpgs that i got from avenue edit when they ripped out their audio rooms and um oh, they, they were in a like a another post house in an office building mm-hmm. so then here here's fun stuff ready lots of gear gear okay um neotech uh preamp four band eq eight channel side tech which is basically like a newer version of neotech the guy from neotech millennia preamp this is vincent's um uh what do you call it focus right isa preamp i say yeah. this is a black lion uh like api clone four channel preamp over here, we got a spring reverb that's goofy from DoD, uh, a distressor, which is a fun compressor, kind of chameleon, classic DBX160 compressor, an old dynamite. I don't use this. This is Vincent's. Um, it's like a, um, th- these are all Vincent's actually. Uh huh. It's like a gate compressor thing. This is a Chinese clone. I forget what company. Acceler. Alceron or something. You know, of, Dynamite, uh, there's a UAD UAD. version of Dynamite, uh, yeah. you know, Universal Audio, and it's really yep. good, actually. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's an interesting one. It's kind of a little bit hard to set. I don't it's, dig into it too much. It's Valley people, yeah. right? For, yeah. For those it's of you who are... Yep, Valley right there. Yep. Yeah. For those of you who are watching this going, wow, I have to get all this stuff to do voiceover? No. No, Which part of this is, rack is your stuff? It looks like there's an LA4 or no, an 1176. So, so yeah, yeah, basically the spring reverb's mine, uh, the uh, distressor and the 160 and, the, and these things 
down to the Neve. Uh, actually, all the way to the 1176 is Vincent's. Uh-huh. The LA-2A clone is mine. The Altec compressor is mine. And these goofy, never heard of them, Tapathon. They, it looks tape-a-thon. like a Tapathon. These are the head amps from an, Oops. Um, It looked like an Ampeg tape deck, but it's a tape deck called Tapathon, used in radio stations in the 60s and 70s. And my friend just gave me the tape deck, and I ended up selling the the transport on Reverb for like fifty bucks. But I kept the, kept the head amps, and I had someone convert them into mic preamps because they've got Longevin amps inside of them. Which, if anybody knows, like Longevins are pretty sweet. And yeah. transformer in, transformer out. I had someone basically wire in phantom power to them, and like often t- tape head amps from the day could can be turned into preamps, and so. There you go. I had those. And then over here. Patch Bay. Got the whole Patch Bay. <laughs> oh, boy. TTS so, Patch Bay. TT, hell yeah. Or TT, yeah. Yep. And then the, up here is a speaker switch, and then this is the monitor controller because it does be- more than what the big does. And then Patch Bay for the whole big and all the outboard gear, and then your converters. And this is a controller for a preamp called the Paint Pot which the idea with it is that the preamp goes right next to the microphone and then the controller is far away, and that way you have the shortest microphone signal. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And then up here, very sweet Santet EQ. This is mainly like a music mastering rack. This is a Manly very very Mu compressor, stereo. And then this is an Avalon, also a compressor, but really the great thing here is this passive EQ, which is pretty awesome. The top band there is at 32K. And you can't hear it, but it's just like glass. And it's a mastering it's, thing. It's the air thing. thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. Man, so, that's a real music studio right yeah. there. That 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 is totally geeking out as far as Yeah, and then there's the live room over there, which has got drums and a piano and a stack of microphones. Sounds like a recording. Stuff. Never enough, by the way. Yeah. So no. Yeah, it's raining. Do you, do you care if I turn that light off? Is this better or worse? Uh, Streaks through me. It's there, there are right through specular, you. specular, or whatever. There we go. Okay, so we're getting, we're, yeah, we're getting a mass spectrometer of the, the yeah. elements in your studio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rob headroom. Yeah. Anyway, so one of the things you and George have known each other for a while, and one of the things that you guys have done, and we had you guys on as a, as a group uh, last year. It's the Pro Audio Suite. How did how did that come to be? And and you know, is it just the idea of let's be totally geeky and let's do a podcast about being geeky? I this this is like the dating game because I can't remember, but I think <laughs> so. I'm pretty sure like George was on the show separately from me, and maybe I was on the show separately. But at one point, yeah. we end up on we Robos and. Yeah, we end up as like simultaneous guests on their show. And the whole thing ended up being just like a combustible mix of stupidity. And uh, <laughs> and then we were just like, let's do it again. And in other we, words, we had fun. Yeah. We had fun. It was enjoyable. We kind of we clicked. People seemed to enjoy listening to it. I don't even know if we cared if people enjoyed it. I don't it. think so. We just knew like, that we had a good time doing it. We were, we were just like it was like the right combo of like Andrew was like wanted to listen to you and I geek out, Robo was like ooh I can like this is actually interesting information and and then whatever and and we did a micro didn't we do a like the thing that kind of took off was we did that microphone shootout and the um the the road ended up sounding like ridiculously like a four sixteen an NT one sounded a lot like a forty one six forty one six I'm sorry the way we uh, pronounce That's right. it on on via. <laughs> On the, the pro audio suite, it's the because proper. half of them are down below. They're down it's under, right? Down so under, they say yeah. they say the four one six. They call it the four one six, and we call yeah. it the four sixteen. So we, it became the forty one six. And that's the proper way to say it, by the way. So if you're with it, then you would know. And if not, well, right? Of course. Sorry. Look, and the water goes the wrong way down there. <laughs> Flush the toilet. <laughs> The no, hardest part about doing the thing. show together, honestly, is it's the time, time zone stuff. Yeah. It's such a pain. Like whenever we switch to daylight savings, it throws, our, throws everything off an hour. And then somehow ends up being two hours off because I think Robbo tries to compensate and goes the wrong direction. And I'm just like, and, when and no matter what time you make it, I will be like 
something else will be happening five minutes before that. Well, Robert, you are, you somehow managed to deal with multitasking at a level that I've long, long since give up, given up. It will like, shorten your life. That's what I'm worried. I'm really worried <laughs> about you, man. You got to take it easy. I know. Robert, Robert's an incredible resource to a lot, a lot of people. I mean, He's dealing with source element support. He's dealing with internal source element stuff with their own company, his own business. And then also he's on, he's one of our top phone tech support. If you call George the tech, very good chance you're going to get yeah. Robert on the phone. Especially if it's a source connect issue. You know, yeah, you know. especially if, if get, it's a source connect issue. If, if I get paged on that, I'm like, oh, this is, I'm a marshal. Well, the first I, thing that they I, call, I tend to call, just do those ask. ones. Like sometimes I see the other stuff. I'm like, I don't. <laughs> like it's like i just want to like go up there and like just bat the lob like here you go like there you go like mm -hmm. out. <laughs> we have a question when they call in is is your issue source connect related and if it is then we you yep you pretty much are no, you're number one on that call yeah, so that's how it goes uh once again if you're just joining us you've missed lots of hilarity uh <laughs> and lots of information we're talking with robert marshall from source elements and if you've got a question throw it in the chat room, especially if it's about Source Connect or about what we're going to just talk about in just a minute, something that George and Robert have been working on diligently for the last uh, while. And that is a thing called the Passport VO, which is an interface designed specifically for voiceover by people who do voiceover. Which people seem to endlessly not understand why the product needs to exist. They're like, well, why have a Scarlet? Yeah, so every, two, every why do I need like, why, this? Why, like, don't you want to record both mics at the same time? No, not really. Actually, that's a problem. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, so, yeah, maybe. So we, we, we were talking about it on a show a couple of months ago. Just having one of the type, types of things we talk about, what we just love to geek out about products. And the show, the show is about what is the best interface for a voiceover artist. Right. That's literally what the this one that works. Was. Well, and it came down to like either the super simple thing or you get the UA Apollo and you can do everything you want. But the huge problem with that, because if you wanted to be able to do everything, then you had to understand the Apollo, which could do everything and then more stuff that you didn't want it to do, or else you were trapped in a kind of simple interface and then having to do a bunch of software stuff to, or it's still software, but you, right. you still end up in a murky world trying to make it do everything you want it to do because these are music devices right. designed, you know, they're designed for music. Really. Right. Every, right. Everything's designed for music. So I think it's really cool that you guys decided to get together uh, with, uh, with Mike Goodman over at uh, Centrance yeah. to come up with this great thing that we're about to see the Passport VO. Tell us yeah. all about it and what it does and why it is specifically for voiceover. Um, I'll, I'll take a quick shot at it. For me, the reasons why it's specifically for voiceover. Um, the first feature at the top is um, you have a selectable microphone. So you can have two microphones and then pick which one you're going to use. But you don't have to switch your routing in your software. It mm -hmm. switches the routing here. Which microphone do I want going in? No software to change, just the front panel. Then... It has an actual mic mute, which I don't think you can really find except for on the Apollo on the channel strip, but most of these interfaces don't have a hardware microphone mute. And that's useful when you want to just curse out your client and then get back on the line and be like, yeah, what was that other direction you wanted? Yes. Yeah, or make a bodily function. That too, right. What we used to um, call a cough button. Then right, the, right, right. The next probably most specific reason why it's for voiceover is because the microphone does not feed to the speaker outputs, which are actually on the, is it the back or the front, George? What is he calls it the front. I don't, yeah. I, I still, I, don't I, I think it's on that back, but this yeah. is the front. That's as the front yeah. in, in Centrance parlance. So the, the speaker jacks are here on the front and yes, they are small, but that's all we could fit on this little guy. And mm -hmm. the microphone inputs right next to the speaker outputs, do not, do not feed, feed the speaker there. output so you don't have to have a microphone. You don't basically have to monitor, create a PA system in your home studio where you're right. constantly fighting you, feedback you don't have from feedback. muting speakers yeah. to avoid feedback. Exactly. But the microphone does go to your headphones in the booth where you want it to go. Right. And then I think that pretty much brings us to the 
back pan front, back panel, which has you know this is where we the idea was that we set it up so it has a default setup that makes sense for most every talent. And the first thing is again a voiceover specific feature. The the record you can choose to have the second channel of the recording. Should you choose to record two channels, you're only going to send one. But are you going to record a gain reduced version of the first mic or the selected mic? A I safety say. channel, a safety a safety in case you clip your input on a Go. really exuberant performance. Or do you want to record the other channel? So if you have two microphones and your clients don't know if they want the 416 or the U87, then you can record both which is pretty much the mode that most of the normal music interfaces give right. you at that point. That makes it work like a Scarlett 2 R2, essentially. And then the next one, which brings in the next huge feature to this thing, is can you record the comms? And what are comms? What are comms? Comms are communications. And inevitably, this, you know, now everyone's working remotely, ideally with Source Connect, but with whatever. And so really the Passport VO is too audio interfaces in one and this simplifies everything tremendously because if not you have to figure out how to feed things into your audio interface without feeding your clients back into the audio interface so that you don't get a feedback loop and then if you're on windows you have to figure out how to get two applications to want to use the same audio interface at the same time without butting heads and we just decided to kind of do the keep it simple thing and give you one interface, which is on the left for the recording. That's what goes into your backup recording software. Mm -hmm. And one on the right, which if you're comms, which would go to Source Connect or maybe some other platforms. I don't know which ones, I can't think of any others, but it would go to some <laughs> other platform if there was one. Right, right. Um, and so here with that record setting, you can record the comments. Comments. That's what comms stand for, by the way, is comments, um, commentary, and uh, of, of what your clients told you. So maybe you need to have notes for editing, and they're like, that's a good take, and whatever. Or you just want to review the session so that you can... Or you're getting coached, and pain. you want to keep a track of your coach's notes. There you go. Or you're recording an interview, because you kind of do podcasting and voiceover. So there's some flexibility there. Which is um, a lot of people. And this is the most common thing that people need to do, and they just lose their head trying to make yeah. their computer do this. And once they make their computer do that, then they can't go back to the old way right. or they get all discombobulated. So here's a simple three-way switch that really takes care of the three most common needs of a second channel. And then the two interfaces keep everything separated so there's no feedback. What's next? I guess the- Those um, are the big ones. Yeah. Um, it has it's a got a compressor in it, which is It does have a nice. compressor, which, uh, and it's, it's meant to be a transparent one, not- a limiter where it's very just yeah the signal. like like i might not even be mad at you for turning it on but it's very light it's got a meter that's usable on the front panel without mm -hmm. using software to see what's going into the thing standing um right. separate high pass filter separate 48 volt in case you're using a ribbon microphone or whatever reason you don't want to have 48 volts on um, right. uh what else it's got it a headphone a... extension output yeah which, which you can use to feed your box out it's got a um, power switch. Yeah, it's a power <laughs> so switch. This don't was have power switches. This was something we thought was helpful because it's got two USBs, right? So sometimes you have to reboot a unit because some device isn't talking to the unit or if there's a communication or you just want to shut your studio off. There's just a single power switch that yeah. shuts off the unit. And, and, and also if you're using it mobily, you can switch which interface is the power because sometimes or often the phone can't power this thing up. So right. you would power it with, say, an external battery or a wall wart going to the comms port, and you can use the record port. Or or you could power it from the computer, use the computer as a completely separate backup to the your phone if you really want to have, like, complete, not, not just a backup in the computer, but in case the computer explodes. Really, everything you can need without going into... Like I need to filter and EQ and really do some heavy duty processing on my voice. Right. I think this is what most every voice talent needs without going completely overboard. So you could buy this, start out as a beginner, and this thing will take you well into your career is a reality, I think. And and it's in the side I know we gotta go over break here a sec, but the sidebar thing is that this is something we can send out to any actor and they they will be able to get it working. Um we could send it out in the field for a field production. We could send it out to a talent to do an interview. No soft broadcast situation. 
and they're not going to get too far into the weeds using this thing. It's just it's just elegantly designed so that every button has a specific function without a million layers of menus and screens and everything to get lost in. Because there's literally no software for it. Yep. And, and that's a good thing. And that's, that's we look really at cool. it as a good thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're going to take a break. We're going to talk a little bit more about the Passport VO. If you've got a question about this, because I'm sure most of you, your eyes are rolling to the back of your head going, what, how do I use this? We can we can go over it a little bit. If you've got a question about it, throw it in the chat room right now. And Jeff Holman will get that question to us in the next segment. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with Robert Marshall here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. Vacation time is just around the corner, around the world. For example, here's Australian voiceover pro Andrew Peters on vacation in London recording a commercial with his Portabooth Pro. Why is the Portabooth Pro gaining users worldwide? Well, just listen. Winter's tough. The rain, the wind, the cold. Performers can capture great audio even in acoustically untreated spaces with the Portabooth Pro. Your microphone hears the sound of a human-sized sound booth at a fraction of the size and cost. The Pro accommodates large and long microphones, lengthy scripts, and e-reading devices. The Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro is lined with Oralex Studio Foam. It's a professional quality sound studio that assembles in less than a minute. And its multi-pocketed carrying case makes it super easy to take your gear and your voice wherever you go. Order your Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro now. Just $389.99. Only at voiceoveressentials.com. It's hey, you. This is my live ad for Source Connect? It is. <laughs> Why don't we just have Robert do this? Oh, God, no. Don't, don't make me do oh, it. We'll make him do that. We'll make him do that. Um, anyway, this is our this is our chance on the show to thank our sponsor, Source Elements, because as Robert's well aware, he and the t the team at Source Elements has supported us for quite a long time, and there it's a no brainer because Source Connect is absolutely one of the strongest tools in the toolbox that a voice actor can have, and the the key is really the 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 team behind it. You know, the software. It's been around quite a long time, right? And there are other tools coming and going, by the way, that do similar stuff to Source Connect. But really, I think that makes it such a compelling and loved and relied upon tool is the team behind it. It's the support that keeps it running. It's the ability to get help when you need it um, at odd hours. They have folks literally around the globe um, on call to provide support in emergencies. And you can support you can schedule support as well. So if you know you're going to need some help with it or you want to get some help in advance scheduled, you can do that through the website. There's a lot of great education over there. And there's just a huge installed user base of Source Connect. So when you start using Source Connect in your studio, you're now in this database and you're now searchable and findable by studios and producers around the globe. So that's also not a bad thing. So anyway, we want to thank Source Elements again for their sponsorship of the show. If you want to get started, head over to source-elements.com and you can get a trial over there. Get yourself started. Get into the process of getting it up and running and uh, be in play so that you can be available for those big gigs. Anyway, let's get on to the show. There's so much more to do right after this. You know, I speak about the ACX Masterclass, the class that Dan O'Day and I teach that helps actors and voice talent add audiobook narration to their options for making money, for doing work, with a great sense of pride because hundreds and hundreds of those performers have taken the course and together they have produced over 5,000 books that are on sale right now on Audible. It just blows my mind that there's been that kind of production level from the people that have taken the course. And the cool thing is we're about to do the course again this summer, the home study version of the course. And right now, this week only, you have the opportunity to do a three pay monthly, no interest, lowest price anybody will pay for the course payment plan. So if you go to acxmasterclass.com, you'll see a little link saying, take me to the three payment plan. Right now, this week, three payments, lowest price only for the ACX Masterclass. 
This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. V-O-B-S dot TV. All right, and we're back. So I told you I can handle the breaks. It's no big deal. Well done, sir. Well Thank done. you. I'm not fishing for compliments. Anyway, we're talking with Robert Marshall from Source Elements, and we've been talking about the Passport VO. Uh, now, before we get into some questions here, you guys have to move a bunch of these things in in the very near future, do you not? Explain. We we have to move things, or or you have to move, move these things? units. We have to hit it. Oh, we oh I see. Goal. Yes, we, there is a it goal can't stage. happen unless there's. Unfortunately, the reality is that the reason why all these companies are making music audio interfaces is because they know they can sell more of those than something that's so specific. So in order to get Centrance to do this with us, um, they have to know that they can run at least one one run. And these are really a small batch thing. So the the other thing about it is just the scale of economy and the, you know, like the more specific it gets. It is, you know, it's two interfaces in one. Your average interface is probably 200 bucks for a stereo. So if this was two units, it'd be 400. But what's the cost, George? There's a lot of routing in it and everything else. Is it six? You got mute miking. You got you got mic switching. Mic uh, the mute controls, things that you would normally cobble together. It's a six hundred ninety nine dollar pre sale. Would, right, like like the mic mute button. That's like a fifty dollar box if you get it as a foot switch. A junky one fifty. A good one's a hundred. I have right. one of the good ones. Are hundred bucks. Right. So yeah. so basically, but I, I forgot the price point. How much is it? Six ninety nine. Six ninety nine. Yeah. So yeah. so we got we've got. What is it? Twenty five more to make to make the batch that would seed it because then it can actually become a product. If they can't get a hundred of them, then there's none of them. Is the kind of situation. Yeah, yeah that is the truth of the matter. So I, I know a lot of you are watching. A number of you have actually have bought into the campaign already. And for that, we thank you very, very much. And um, you're basically in on you're in on it now. So if you if you want to help make this thing come to life um tell your friends why you decided to take the leap and and invest in it and that that you trusted us yeah. because we're going to make sure this thing is the most useful longest lasting great greatest sounding little device you've ever owned you know that's yeah. that's what we want to do i i find it fascinating that mike goodman over at uh, over at centrance and in chicago of all places yeah um yeah. uh, he he comes up with these things and does these somewhat limited runs of these very very specific types of interfaces i mean we've got we've got the passport vo uh, i have the, this one that's that's the uh that's the podcaster podcaster so the the unit we we're getting getting made is going to feel and look a lot like this so in terms of size it's pretty small right i've, a, I've got the uh, i've got the the original one what was it called the, the mixer uh, face the mixer face without mm -hmm. the recorder so it's like right I, I think they don't even sell it now without a recorder that's right. but, that, but that's the thing about michael is that he's approachable you know there is no yes. approaching focus right being like hey we think you should make these things that we think we can sell a hundred of them yeah we're a bunch we're pretty of sure. guys that want you to make this thing and <laughs> not gonna happen yeah well we got a question here from jack kolar who's watching on youtube hey he says please brag about the specs for this thing is there any self noise it's basically the same specs as as the other centrance products so it, it kind of starts out with a really kick-ass platform to begin with yeah um, i mean the the so what you're getting here is sort of what's being inherited from other products from centrance right we are not inventing new preamps and new converters right we are repurposing what's already been optimized and developed by centrance and other products so for those that care about numbers here they are um, you can you can count on them being extremely similar to these numbers because again the preamp circuits line ins the converters the everything compressor the high pass filter you know right. in fact actually I, that, that was a fun discussion because it's first like do we want a steeper one it's like yeah like the really gentle thing even though it, it makes sense it just yeah gets it's, rid of the it's a gentle roll off meaning it starts high but it starts very gentle and by the time it gets down to the rumble frequency below 60 or what or so it will have rolled off quite a lot by that point so it will really be effective at rumble without taking out too much low end of the voice it's not easy to have a high pass filter 
that has a single setting and right. you write for everybody. So yeah. that's why it was chosen like that. I mean, a high pass filter really, as long as you're like 80 hertz and below, that's that cuts out so much of the the observable noise that you'll have in your file uh mm. even though it's below perhaps the threshold it's, of it's not going to get rid of like plosives it's not the high right. it's not the high pass filter right. that's going to take care of that but the thing about those is that unless you you really need a tunable one to do that one right because if not right. you're going to eat into your voice right. and and then the other one is that you're going to have a steeper order and you're going to get some phase shifting with that which right is we're just trying to be really minimal it's the same idea with the compressor it's just a really light gonna buy you some headroom gonna kind of just beef up your level just a little bit but it's really going to be hardly observed right um and yeah. that's what you want you want it to be Trans seamless seamless and transparent and transparent yeah. not distracting like it's not going to get you in trouble right if you like yeah there's all exactly. sorts of things that can get you in trouble too uh, right. question from Jeff Holman. And by the way, if you've got a question for Robert Marshall about this particular thing or about Source Connect, because I know you all have questions about Source Connect, uh, throw it in the chat room and Jeff will get that to us right now. And speaking of Jeff, he has a question. Uh, so he says, uh, so has all that hard box equipment in your studio been rendered obsolete now by <laughs> software in an interface like the Relevator and the Apollo? Yes. I mean, does it so, matter though, right? So I'll <laughs> like, I'll, I'll tell you even funnier story that maybe George can relate to, but one of the, I, I think it was freshman year out of college. Cause I, my, my, my dorm looked like a recording studio. My, my roommate was a saint. Cause I <laughs> took that thing over and I was doing like rap sessions in there and everything else. And uh, anyways, I'm at, I'm on summer break and I, draw this setup because i was tired of going to people's places setting up everything it'd take three hours to set everything up and then you have to tear it down so i wanted this table that had everything set up on it with a patch bay and i drew this big cartoonish single plug like a one power plug i could just walk in with this thing and plug it in and i was using a cassette eight track at the time that was like the center of this thing tascam tascam 688 <laughs> yep got, got actually that thing's a wonder of science anyways um and so that's like the late 90s by the time that's like i've been using the hell out of it and then i get my first pro tool system and that really is a studio in the box the first tdm system was you know granted it was like a pile of rack gear you know probably a four rack space chassis and another computer but by you know, easily by say 2003, you did not need all this stuff if you don't want to. There's subtle differences with all of it, but anybody, you know, if if you give someone a stack of SM57s and a Behringer interface and Reaper, the only reason why they can't make a good record is them at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's skill. Yeah, the limiting That's... factor is skill now. It yeah. is not. The gear anymore. it's all and like nice stuff to have Still in creativity yeah i mean this is like really finer point stuff but it's you know in, in, in a sense maybe it just keeps you motivated and it makes it fun as, as the engineer you're inspired like, inspired yeah. i think is the word no yeah. but there, there's a lot of inspired. subtle differences and for a lot of the compressors it's ridiculous how close they get for being software <laughs> sure <laughs> yeah. once again we're talking with robert marshall if you've got a question for him even about Source Connect, because nobody knows more about Source Connect than he does. There actually is one. Oh, there is a question about Source, Source Connect. Yes. Oh, yes. Can I see the questions? Uh, is it regarding comments? Source Connect updates? Oh, I have oh. Source Connect standard. Um, I signed up uh, three years or more ago, I guess. Um, will I get notification when there are updates, or will it automatically update? It's this version update is going to be a big one. So I. Uh, it won't automatically update. You will run the updater and um, we hope to have it. I'll, I'll get killed, but I'm going to say definitely this year, probably <laughs> before the end of this year. Can I be vague enough? Um, Source Connect 4 is a major rebuild for us. Um, it's every other version of Source Connect was built off of the same original platform that we literally established in 2005. And so we've, learned a lot of stuff and we didn't want to get into the position that a lot of companies had gotten into where they 
really over expanded the software and the foundation wasn't able to take it. So we completely replatformed it. Um, and it's been a very interesting education. Um, we tried to not make any of the mistakes that we made in the last 20 years. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you're no pressure, no pressure. You make those mistakes again. And, but at least this time it's like, we realized when we were there and we had backed out of certain spots and it's been a very methodical thing and we're very, happy with what we have now um so i think this like source connect 4 is going to be a big difference in terms of um, just even compatibility with windows that's just going to help like actual compatibility um all the features being able to conference things easier having all the features work without having to set things up no port forwarding no iLock. um oh. how did how did, you, how did you get past the port forwarding thing i think that's probably what intimidates most people about yeah you know, so so port forwarding is the right way to do it and but we just realized that like we cannot lift the world up anymore and so um it like the difference between having a forwarded port and using source stream is essentially that one way or the other you have to trust the party that you're that you're connecting with on a sort of internet level and if you have port forwarding that's essentially setting up that trust and if you don't have port forwarding, we might be able to knock our way through, especially if one side has there's their ports forward and the other side doesn't. It, but eventually, if both systems can't trust each other, the only thing you can trust is us because you're both common. And then we have to pass all the data to, in order to complete that connection. And that's what source stream is. So it's not the ideal um, way, but it gets the connection done, period. And Source Connect 4 is going to be a lot smarter about being able to find its own way through the firewall, really get that port that that peer-to-peer -peer connection set up, probably without needing the port forwarding. And then if the port forwarding isn't available because we're just not going to have it be part of it anymore, it'll just kick over to Source Stream, but Source Stream will be automatic and across the whole platform. Mm -hmm. And and we've kind of beefed it up some more. We had to do a lot of work on it actually early in the pandemic because we just got pummeled, but we've sort of made that industrial strength as well. So a lot of um, behind the scene things, you know, in the sense it's like, well, it still just connects me. Like, what's the big deal? Um, it's a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that makes it different, platforming it so that we will be able to introduce video to it, all these kinds of things that are just assumed. Um, on the engineer side, it's going to multi-track really easily. So cool. a lot of the setup that you used to have to have to do an ensemble voice record is now just boom there, and you get the. That's good. It's sort of like the best of Source Connect now and Source Connect combined into right. one is essentially what it is. With yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Jay asks, yeah. is it worth it to get Source Connect certified? Explain to us what that mm. is. We we think so. Yeah, we, we <laughs> <laughs> of course we do. Um, it it's essentially just a process of making sure that you're fully set up, that you have the confidence that when you set up when you do a Source Connect session and something is not right, it's not you. That you've checked off all your boxes and know and you know you're good to go. As an actor, I think it's very easy for some studios to put a lot of downward pressure on the actor, and um, it can be really stressful. And I'll be honest, like sometimes these studios are not all together or they're just kind of, there's a lot of chaos in everyone's life. We'll put it that way. And so they don't necessarily maybe have their port forwarding set up or their routing isn't right. And when you hook up with a studio and you hear an echo of yourself, just understanding that there's no way that you can cause a 400 millisecond echo for yourself. It's them. Um, and so being certified also means that your connection is solid. We've, run through everything and therefore people can book you with confidence. Um, so that's, that's what it's about. And we think it's worth it. We're going to try to drive some more value into that whole thing as well um, with, with future updates in, in, in the community. But that's currently what it's about is mainly just, are you technically good to go? And are you confident for yourself and your clients have confidence in that as well? Right. Once again, Good we're question. talking with Robert Marshall where we're talking about, a couple of different things. We still have a couple of comments, sort of questions. Grace Newton asks, hopefully you guys will do a rundown of all the features, which we, we've done, because I don't know enough about it to ask any questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am interested in the two USB ports. Now, one is for one thing and one is for the other, right? 
Right. One one is for recording, and the other one is for communicating. I, I do have a, a, a slide here that I don't think if you don't un fundamentally understand what the features are for, this may not help you. Uh, <laughs> spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, here, yeah. I'll. Here's here's a common situation that that the that the that the passport just takes care of easily. You hook up with your clients. They're recording you on Zoom because they don't want to hire an audio. Uh, they're recording you on Zoom because they don't want to hire an audio engineer. And they're again putting everything on you to a you're like make sure it sounds good. No one's going to double check it because we're hearing it over this connection, so we don't even know what it sounds like. And then we're going to ask you to play stuff back because we're just sitting in a conference room or a Zoom room and we don't have any audio person here. It's just you reading scripts and we're going to give all these files to a, all your files to an Avid editor after the fact. So with the Passport, playing back is as easy as just going to your backup recorder, stopping and playing back. And literally, you don't have to do anything to your setup. Um, I, I, I can tell you that people have spent hundreds and thousands of dollars getting their studio set up for these types of playback situations and other things. Yep. But just the playback thing alone, some people have really... Yes. I've set it up for a lot of people over the years, and it was always pretty complicated. People have been buying Apollos, and it did make it shrink in, into a box. You know, now all that stuff is in here. But it doesn't Instead of needing work. two audio interfaces, right? Because, George, what were you doing before the Apollo with a lot of people? You'd set them up with two audio I interfaces. A Behringer UCA202 right. is the playback loop for for your communications. And a, right? power, and a pile of cables that you couldn't go on vacation with. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it, it really does simplify a lot of things, even though those features make no sense, I think, if you're not using this type of gear on it on a regular basis but that's kind of the but, point but that's it's kind still, of the point is that you yeah. can buy a scarlet and you're going to spend another 200 dollars later you're, you're going to outgrow it and yeah. and you're going to spend a lot of time trying to figure it out and then you're going to spend a lot of time trying to figure something else out later or we we think this is something that starts where you're at gets the core feature done really well and grows reasonably where most voiceover talent kind of get off the train anyways. They don't want to be full up audio engineers, but they just need enough to be able to give playback, be able to adjust some communications, maybe record somebody every now and again. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and that's why this is sitting on a stool. Right, because yeah, you outgrew can't tell it. You how many interfaces? Right, are. there you go. Oh. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. There's interfaces are piling up over here. This one's Robert thousand dollars, and it can't do a lot of what our that's the that's the yellow, isn't it? Yes. Yes. What are people oh, thinking nice. about this? Keep it and, and that's the point. The, the yellow was designed to be super, super, super simple. What, wasn't that one of the points of it? It was like, it, yeah. you, you can't mess it up. It's like high quality and ridiculously simple. Yeah. What, but but loses simple. important features. Yeah. yeah. One last question from Patricia Tusanade. She says, uh, I almost got it, but I'm too much of a newbie. Not sure if I should. I have an Apollo Solo right now. Will we get a chance to get this particular device, the Passport VO? in the future later on only if we can sell a hundred of them how, how long do we have george like a week i mean essentially yeah, here's get the deal. It. we passed our 15 day window where we were yeah we failed we technically we failed, failed didn't we we failed. did all right no we failed we didn't, we, hit we didn't sell a hundred right yeah. so after that big push michael didn't want it to die because he believes in it now he sees that there's real value he has seen that you guys have backed up this product by making pre-orders and he doesn't want it to fail. So he's still supporting trying to reach that goal. The problem is he can't do it all summer. Right. He's going to Europe. He's got trade shows to do and he's a small up. He, he's got some other products on the deck he's got too. Other I think things he said. on the deck. And yeah, so we really do, I think really about a week, you know, a May, I think he was saying May 7th, 9th, somewhere in that range is when he was going to cut it off. So. Well, yeah. we'll push it at WovoCon this weekend. You got well because at some there. point it's not fair to the people that did put the money down. Right. It's going to take once we get the go. It's going to still take several months to deliver, and so we right. can't just like sit on people's money. Right. Is the Centrance, Centrance is holding that money now. To be really yeah, yeah we're, we're not doing it. If this we is don't hit the goal, the money goes back. If you get the product in the mail in four or five months and you don't like it you get your money back like you this is not a donation 
<laughs> it's not the money doesn't disappear. It's not a GoFundMe project. It's not a GoFundMe. It's not kick Indiegogo or Kickstarter. This money, uh, you are not donating money. So you're getting a product. Yeah, you're yeah, getting a yeah, product. Super. Well, Robert, thank you so much for joining us tonight and telling us about the uh, the, the the passport uh, and uh, all you. the other cool stuff that you do. And and good luck with uh, with that one. And, of course, with Source Connect and with the update on that. Really looking forward to all this. Thank you, guys. Well, always really good to be on the show. And uh, thank you for the plug, George. <laughs> all right. For, for, okay. for, for not making me do it. <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> no. <laughs> All righty. We'll be right back to wrap things up and re rack it for Tech Talk right after these important messages. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. Hey there. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right. Well, it's time for uh <laughs> Wait, time for a little bit of name dropping, to tell you the truth, because um, the other day I got a phone call or a text. It was it was a text from our good friend, Debbie Derryberry, and she's like, I'm trying to get my niece a, a website for voiceover. What, are, what do I do? And we don't want to spend a lot. So I sent her over to a place that was my idea originally, and our friends at Voice Actor Websites started up. It's called Voice Actor dot com voice actor.com what is voice actor.com voice actor.com is the greatest thing ever if you're just starting out in voiceover because everybody has to have a website it's really really important to have that web presence when you're a voice actor so if someone you know hears your demo and they're like well let me see what this person's about got to have a website that has a number of basic things your name your demos and your contact info and it has to look nice. You know, it, it's like, well, no, it's got to have flowers and I have to have me ju jumping around it. All you need is your name, your demos, and your contact information and a nice background. And what voiceactor.com does is it gives you templated uh, websites. Very easy. You can start for free and get yourself online in half an hour. Even less if you're pretty good with that kind of stuff. Just follow the instructions, check it out, start an account there. It's it's free to start. And if you want to, of course, upgrade to something where you can get a little bit more customization, go on over there. It's voiceactor.com. And uh, that will get you online in no time. We'll be right back and finish things up right after this. We are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as, as Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. Wovo is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with the a chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. living. 
This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Body Shop. All right. We're that was back. Great. Yeah. No, oh, Robert's always fascinating to, to talk to and uh and see all the, I mean, there's a guy with a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And how much of it does he actually use? Nah, I just like to push buttons. That's really day to day. I mean, a lot of it is just a collection that of of things that are fun to play with and use. And sometimes when you're when you're running a studio, um, people are coming in, they're paying you for your time, and sometimes your your gear. They want to see right. what kind of unique stuff you have for them to to use. What's gonna what can you bring the mojo to their recording? So that right. is some of it. Some of it's mysterious. Right. So next week on this very show, when you tune in, it will be Tech Talk number 102. Yay. Believe it or not. And uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff to talk about. We're going to record that. If you're watching live, you can actually watch us do Tech Talk live and ask your questions. So hang out for that. Uh, and then in two weeks, Dave Walsh. Uh, the great, great voiceover coach will be joining us and talking about a lot of cool stuff. And well, I guess he'll coach me through another spot. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you still got 10% off anything at George of the Tech? That's right. VOBS Fan 10 gets you 10% off any services or webinars at George the dot Tech. All right. We also need to thank all our donors of the week, and they are very helpful to us. Grace Newton. Robert Leadham, Steve Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Thomas Pinto, Greg Thomas, a hey, doctor voice, Antland Productions. Looking forward to seeing Uncle Roy this hey. weekend. A Martha Khan, nine four nine Designs, Christopher Epperson, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsaw, and Sandra Manwiller. All righty. Oh, hey. by the way, last yes. thing, last thing, last little pluggy thing. Yeah. If you do buy the passport, you put the order in, please use VOBS in the coupon code area. That just lets them know you heard about it here. If you forgot, just let, just email them and let them know we'd appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course. Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. Voiceover extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. <laughs> there it is right there. VoiceActor.com and WorldVoices.org, which is the Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. We have Wovocon coming up this weekend. I am so looking forward to that. Sounds like it's going to be fun. It's going to be a hug fest, which is the most <laughs> important thing. And you'll have more uh, time to hug everybody because there's fewer people. It's not well, like a zoo. That's right. Yeah, it's not like, wait, I see her. She's on the other side of the room. No, it's... Or like, wait, you were there for four days too, and we never saw each other? No, <laughs> that, that doesn't that, that was Atlanta. There were yeah, a thousand people. Yeah, that's Atlanta. There. That's not Wobocon. That's right. Uh, we need to thank Jeff Holman for getting all the stuff in our chat room. Yay. Uh, where, where was Sue? Sue was busy tonight. So yeah, I'm doing all the switching off. right now. And, of course, Lee Penny for being Lee penny uh hey that's going to do it for us this week on uh, voiceover body shop stay tuned for tech talk live if you're still here you're going to get you get the chance to ask your questions to george and i about anything home voiceover studio so anyway look this isn't an easy business you know it's everybody's trying to do it but not everybody's succeeding you have to have the technology and the knowledge of what it takes to succeed along with just being a good voice actor. But we've come to the conclusion that when it comes to your audio, if it sounds good... It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver... Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Yes. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned for Tech Talk. <laughs>